Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Sukiyo's Art Channel. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you've had a great weekend so far. I apologize uh, for my phone. That was it going off. Sorry about that. Unfortunately, the screen won't turn on, so I can't turn the sound down, but hopefully I won't get a lot of notification noises throughout the video. That sound you hear in the background, those are my birds chirping. So I hope you're okay with that. They're going to be a little bit noisy. <laughs> they get a little bit excited sometimes. For those of you who are just joining and who have not watched part one and two of this video, this is a review of these um, paints, the Pelican Opaque Paint Box. I believe they are gouache. And this is part three. Uh, essentially, I've pretty much already have done a review of these in the last two videos. I've already given my opinion. However, I haven't finished my drawing yet uh, or my painting. I'm hoping to finish it today. And then at the end, I will give my opinion again, but this time it, it will be my final opinion on, on what I think of these paints. Okay, let's get started. So I am drawing Maggie Simpson as an alien, which is really cute, I think. Oh, let me just bring up my reference picture. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Today is an exciting day, actually, because it's snow in London. I'm so happy. I love, so, uh, I love snow, and it rarely snows in London. So when I woke up this morning and it was snowing, I, I couldn't believe it. I was so happy. Okay, hold on. Just bringing up my reference picture. Here we go. I did record the snow, so I will be uploading that video at some point. Okay, but for now, let's carry on. Okay. All right. I did clean my paint box because I had mixtures of paint here, and these were actually much dirtier than they are now. This yellow is still a little bit dirty. There's still a little bit of red mix in there. So I'm just going to remove that red. These are pretty thick paints because they have a lot of chalk. So they kind of ape the properties of gouache. But I think as I've said in a previous video, I don't think it's proper gouache. I think it's because they have so much ch chalk. And sometimes when paints have a lot of chalk, because they feel really thick, they, they appear to be gouache, but they just have a lot of chalk. But if I was to pick between are these watercolors or gouache? I would lean towards gouache. Okay, let me just get some pencils because I said in my last video that I was going to put in some uh, lines and I completely forgot about that. So just bear with me. I'm just going to get some pencils. Okay, I think I'm going to be using these Reeves colored pencils. I think I only used these once uh, to do a color chart just to try them out. And I don't think I, I've used them ever since. I'm just going to turn my screen towards me because just in case some of you decide to comment, I need to be able to see the comments. So if you just bear with me. Okay. Sorry about that, it's a bit shaky. Okay. So I don't want the lines to be too obvious because um, I want to, I don't want it to look too cartoonish, even though it is a, a it is a cartoon. So 
So I just want some soft lines in there. Just so I know where everything goes. Yeah, so today was really exciting because even though London can be quite a cold city in the winter, um, it doesn't snow that often. I think it's it snows almost every year, but um, not every year. When it does snow, it's usually not very impressive. Uh, it, it snows for a little bit and then it rains and then the snow melts and it doesn't stick around for very long. And that is what happened today, to be honest. Uh, you know, it snowed, but to be honest, it, it, I mean, to be fair, it did snow for most of the morning and then it stopped and then the rain started pelting it down. But um, it, it was more than we usually get, I suppose. Oh, listen to my birdies. <laughs> they do all sorts of cute little sounds. I hope you guys have had a good weekend. Mine has been a little bit busy. Yesterday, it was my father's birthday. Happy birthday, Dad. Uh, I sent him a present, which he tells me he likes. He liked very much. Hopefully, he did. And, yeah. That's what I did yesterday. Today, I was just enjoying the snow with my housemate. We, we went out and it started snowing. It's actually a lot of fun. I haven't played in the snow for a long time. We built a snowman, so that was great. <laughs> Not sure what else to say. I'm hoping to be finishing this drawing today. It's more of a sketch, really, even though it's taking me such a long time. I just like finishing my drawings, that's why. I hope you can see fine. Okay, so there was a problem with the internet there. They told me that the connection was unstable and they were trying to reconnect. I hope you guys can, can see the video fine. I hope it's still showing on your screens. If you can't see anything or you're having problems, please let me know. Oh. Thank you very much, Carl Priyart. I really appreciate your support. That's very nice of you to say. Thank you.
those are my birds cooing at each other. They're very cute. One of the things I will say about these paints is that um, they they don't dry consistently. Uh, depending on how much paint you use, um, they can either dry. I'm just take the pencils out. Sorry, guys. I'm finding it hard to reach them. Uh, they can either dry um, very. Uh, don't know how to describe it like here you can see i think i mentioned in one of my previous videos that the particles separated from the water and you can see that in certain areas of the picture so some of them look a bit more opaque and some of them look a bit more translucent but not in a good way um so i wouldn't recommend these two professionals because i i, I don't think the finishing look if that makes sense is it doesn't look professional it looks uh like children's watercolors so sometimes you use cheap ma art materials but the finished product looks great so you can use um or maybe you know it could just be me the way i'm using it maybe i'm using it wrong but yeah i i think there are other materials which are cheap as well which are better than this Let me just do this with a bow. Okay. Okay. Mm. 
Okay, so. I'm going to start adding some of the shadows um, to, oh, let me see which blue do I want to use. I'll try this one. Some shadows to the bow and to the robe and to the baby bottle. I'm going to try to make less of a mess than last time, not mix the colors as much. I don't know if I'll be successful, but I'm going to try. <laughs> Because they're so chalky, they feel quite thick. Let's see if I... Like with any gouache paints, they are pretty thick. But when you add water to them, if you add a substantial amount, they behave, they start behaving like watercolors and become translucent, like so.
So Guashi is, is interesting because um, when I, I, I moved over to England when I was 11 with my parents. And um, I remember being at high school, well, no, sorry, middle school in Portugal, because I don't know what it's like now, but when I was 11 in 1997, they had a system, at least in my hometown, uh, hometown, they had a system where you went to primary school, which is years one to four, and then you have middle school, which is years five and six, and then you have high school, which is years uh, nine to 12. And of course, in England, 12, the year 12 is either 12 form or college, and you do it separately from high school. So in Portugal, you do 12 form in school as part of your high school curriculum. And in England, you have to go to a 12 form uh, college or a college, if that makes sense. I'm not even sure if I'm explaining it properly. But then you go to university after that. And I, I, I did as far as year five while I was living in Portugal with my parents. And I remember doing um, art classes. And wash was very popular in my country. In England, it's it's only recently that it's really started becoming popular. Um, there's, you know, when you go to Portugal, you'll see gouache sold a lot in supermarkets. It's it's, it's sold just as much as watercolors, actually, uh, if not more. It just seems to be a very popular medium uh, in Europe, generally speaking. So it's it's baffling to me that it's taken so long to become popular in England. And I think it's only happened because of YouTube. A lot of artists now using wash uh, in their videos and stuff. But yeah, um, I was actually surprised when I first started my YouTube channel and I started learning about art and stuff, how, um, how I don't know, unpopular gouache was. Or not unpopular, but people didn't really use it that much. It wasn't, and it was, it's really hard to find uh, in England. Like if you go to art stores, there isn't a lot of gouache actually. Uh, even the big stores, they'll sell some gouache, but often um, it's only like, a few, not even, sometimes there's only even one brand. You know, whereas you'll see a lot of uh, watercolor options and acrylic options and even oils. Uh, gouache tends to be quite hard to find still. A lot of the gouache I have, I got it from um, Amazon. So yeah, it's interesting how uh, things like that can vary from country to country. Is gouache popular in your country? Let me know. I'm quite fascinated by you know, gouache, I think, is interesting. <laughs> My birds want to talk. They know I'm making this video, so they want to have their say. <laughs> I am kidding, of course. <laughs> I have to lift some of that color later on. She's happy. No, no, wait. No, that's the boy. The boy makes that sound. She does make sounds as well, but not like that. Yeah, that's the boy. Say guys, <laughs> there go my birds. Um, I have to say, I really like these brushes, even though these are student grade. They are the Taylor Rowney, simply Taylor Rowney. Don't know if you can see that. Okay, which is a student uh, grade um, brand. 
they are very precise. I feel like they give you a lot of control. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with these because brushes are really expensive. So I can't always afford to buy the more expensive brushes, even though I know they're really good. So to know that the um, cheaper student options is good as well, or are good as well, is, is really, it's really helpful. Yeah, but I was talking about wash. <laughs> so wash, um, I believe it used to be poster paint. So before the days of Photoshop, wash was used to, well, Photoshop pictures, but without the Photoshop. So if um, artists uh, were asked to remove blemishes or do what you would do these days in Photoshop, basically they would they would use the wash to make those corrections, essentially. Um, and that's what gouache was used for. It was more of a designer stool. It wasn't really used in art. Um, you know, I don't think it's seen as a fine art medium. Maybe it is now, but even now, I think it's not, it's not quite there. Maybe it's moving that way, but I don't think it's quite there yet. Because it was more of a designer's, um, a designer's tool for corrections. Don't you know? People perhaps don't use it as much these days because now they've got Photoshop. <laughs> the birds are so noisy. But um, yeah, so when you see picture, one thing that I find really funny is when people are discussing uh, photos of old celebrities versus new celebrities, or, or rather modern or current celebrities, and they look at those old black and white photos and they're like, oh, look how smooth their skin was and look how pretty they were. And, you know, and this was before Photoshop. And actually they're wrong because those photos were Photoshopped. They just weren't Photoshopped the way they think because obviously they didn't use uh, computers back then. They used paint, like wash paint, poster paint, um, but the pictures were photoshopped. So that smooth skin, that would have been, you know, no one has skin that's smooth. Um, that would have been painted over. Blemishes would have been corrected. All sorts of things would have been corrected in those pictures. So when you're looking at a black and white picture of an actress that you love or an actor that you love, don't be fooled and think, oh my God, they were perfect. No, trust me, they painted over those pictures. And not to mention that even back then there was already surgery, maybe not the way it is today, and definitely more hush-hush. Um, they're much more open about that now. But yeah, those things already existed to a certain extent. But uh, I don't want to go into that too much because that's not what this video is about. I was just really mentioning that because uh, I believe that gouache started as poster paint for the purposes of designers using it in posters too you know, do what Photoshop does today, as I was saying. Um, and I think that's why, maybe that's why it's not so popular in certain countries, uh, even though, again, it is growing in popularity, because it was, as I said, more of a designer tool than an artist tool. And, you know, um, not the YouTube art community per se, but the art community, I'm kind of, uh, I messed up the rattle, I'm going to try and fix that. The art community can be, not the art community per se, but maybe the art world can be a bit snobbish because um, oil is still seen as, as the one, you know, the principal medium that you would use for fine art. Uh, slowly acrylic and watercolor uh, have, been, you know, started becoming accepted and stuff, but there's still a bit of a snobbish attitude in certain art circles about what's accepted uh, as fine art or not, you know, and et cetera, et cetera. And again, maybe that's that's also why the, the gouache uh, is still not seen as a fine art um, medium because it's, yeah, it was a designer's medium and there's a lot of snobby, snobbiness, snobbishness in, in, the, art, in the art world. Uh, yeah, I don't care for people being snobs, I, I don't believe in it. I think if you can create beautiful things, it doesn't really matter which medium you use, but you know, I, I'm not, I'm not a rich snob that. <laughs>
can afford to buy really <laughs> expensive uh, paintworks for my parlor, especially because, you know, I don't have a parlor. So <laughs> I wish I had a parlor, but I don't. <laughs> Can't afford a parlor. But yeah, for some reason, maybe because maybe gouache is in more of a, a children's tool or a student's tool. Uh, it's sold a lot in supermarkets in, in my country. By the way, that's Portugal, if you're wondering. Um, I don't know. You know, even like it, it's still hard to find light fast gouache, though there are a few brands that are light fast. So it's not impossible. But again, because it's not really considered... Fine art medium, just one of those things. But also, as I said, it is growing popularity. I can be a bit messy with brushes because, uh, again, as mentioned in a previous video, I started with um, colored pencil. And colored pencils are, of course, very precise because of their, you know, sharp tips. With the paint brushes, I feel like um, you need a bit more practice. <laughs> yeah, so I think what I was saying, the reason why I was telling the story about, you know, when I moved to England and stuff was because, um, as I said, when I was a child, gouache was very, it is still very popular in my country. But then when I came over here, it wasn't. And uh, do you know what? I forgot what the point was I was trying to make. <laughs> oh. Never mind. Is the most telling sign that it is washed because you can actually layer the white on top. If it was watercolor, it would be too translucent. My birds are so excited. I'm just checking them. Yes, they're just jumping back and forth. They have a new cage, you see. And because of this, they're just like exploring the new environment. They're very happy because it's a bigger cage than the last one. So as you can see, <laughs> as you can hear rather, they're very happy. Even though I was born in Portugal, I came over, as I said, when I was 11. So I've lived here pretty much all of my life. I feel very British, even though I'm, you know, I'm very proud to be Portuguese and very happy to be Portuguese. And, you know, I feel like I'm kind of a mixture of both. And, uh, yeah, uh, I really like England. <laughs> but I really like Portugal, too. Don't get me wrong. 
I guess I'm used to England, but it's always nice to go back to Portugal. I still have family there. And it's always lovely to see them. Oh, let me just get a tissue. I'm just really trying to make conversation because I'm not sure what to say. <laughs> I feel that everything that I have to say about these paints have been said. Don't know what else to say. So now I'm just sharing my life with you like a diary. You know, you guys are my diary. <laughs> Pretty soon you'll learn everything about me. And, you know, until you get so bored, you switch off, you switch over the channel. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to add a bit more black to the eyes because I feel... I feel like they're not black enough. Oops. Oh, I'm so clumsy with paint brushes. Really not really need to start practicing more. I have to say, lifting the paint, that's one thing I haven't said yet. Uh, lifting the paint from these cakes. Um, it's actually quite difficult because there's so much chalk um, that I, I have to add a substantial substantial amount of water before the color will even lift and, and come off on my paintbrush. I feel like I have to dig with a paintbrush. Like it's hard to explain in order to get the color to lift, which is um, not very nice to be fair. Um, I'm used to better watercolors where you just dip in uh, the brush and the colors lift straight away. It's not that they don't lift nicely. Okay, sorry, these are not watercolors, they're gouache. But still, I've used better gouache than this. Though to be fair, I'm used to gouache coming in, in tubes. I know they do exist in this format. Uh, even Karen Dash does a set of gouache that comes in this type of format. I think I'm ruining the eyes. But uh, yeah, this one is just very chalky. I don't think children will mind as a starter set and even students if they can't afford anything better. Oh, I'm burning the eyes. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Look at her big, big eyes. This is crazy. This is so crazy. It's incredibly crazy. <laughs> I'm going to have to make the other eye bigger now. <laughs> Oh my lord. Look at that big eye. Oh, sorry guys, just my phone is going off. Okay, sorry about that. The eyes in the original picture are not that big. <laughs> There's, <laughs> they're supposed to be these cute little button eyes, and I just gave her alien eyes. But you know what? That's okay, because she's an alien. So it works. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I can't believe how big her eyes are. It's ridiculous. <laughs> oh. <laughs> can't believe it. So silly. Okay. <laughs> the paint is so thick because it's so chalky.
Oh god, <laughs> I just feel like I'm winning that picture. <laughs> I suppose it's good practice. <laughs> oh. Just got gigantic eyes. Oh, they're not even symmetrical. Sym symmetry, right? Overrated. Who cares? I'm kidding. It's very important. <laughs> oh, Lord. Let me just join this. Just <laughs> this looks so bad. Let me just turn it up. Oh, did it. Oh. I did. I'm gonna leave the eyes because I've messed up the eyes. I could lift the color. I'm gonna try and lift the color. Look at her eyelashes. Oh, God. Okay. I just fixed the bear's eyes. I will say one of the things that is, um, I wanted to do this during the day, but I didn't get around to it. One of the things that is difficult is, because I'm, I'm using this artificial light and it's shining directly on my page, making things very, well, shiny. And so sometimes it's hard to see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm gonna try and lift the color. <laughs> oh Lord. I'm trying to get rid of the color on my paintbrush. Okay, let's see if I can do this because I, I don't want to ruin this <laughs> any more than I've already done. <laughs> oh. Okay, well, at least it lifts really easily from the paper, which is good. That's That's good. I think I'm going to redraw or repaint the eyelashes as well because they look terrible. They really look terrible. I'm going to make the eye thinner as well. I did have an underdrawing. Um, I know what you're thinking. You know, if you've done an underdrawing or if you drew first rather than painting straight away, you wouldn't have made such a big mistake. But actually what happened was I did do a drawing, but I went crazy with the paint and <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just messed up. But that, that's the thing about water-based uh, paint that is not acrylic. You can lift the paint if you make mistakes. You can do that with acrylic too. But the thing about acrylic is that acrylic dries really fast. So if you lift the paint while it's still wet, then that's fine. But once it's dried, you won't be able to lift it anymore if you're painting with acrylic. Mm. 
You know, I, I don't think I am going to be using these watercolors again. <laughs> oh, gouache, sorry. I get confused. They don't really specify in the box what it is. They just say it's an opaque paint box, which again, I know, you know, opaque watercolors is just another term for gouache. And it feels like gouache, but um, yeah, they don't officially say it on the box. This is my interpretation. Oh, go. <laughs> Making such a mess. I'm going to need another tissue. It's always good to have a tissue at hand when painting with water-based paints. This sort of, you know, circumstance. Yes, it was snowing in London today, which doesn't happen often. So everyone is really happy. There's a lot of people out on the streets, obviously trying to social distance as much as they could. But there weren't that many, to be fair, but there was more than usual. I think they just wanted to enjoy the snow. Just to clarify, in England, we don't have a curfew per se. We are allowed to go out as long as we don't spend a, a lot of time outside. So maybe we can be an hour out, maybe two for like exercise or whatever, or to go shopping and stuff. I know in other countries like mine, there's a curfew on the weekends where uh, you can't go out after 1 p.m. I, I think we would go crazy here <laughs> if we couldn't go out. <laughs> I'm not sure if the people would stand for that. <laughs> but I, I suppose it depends. So I know that. There are people who are very, very worried about this uh, virus or whatever it is, this COVID-19 thing. And, uh, and of course, if we had to, to stay inside, we would stay inside. But I, I really hope it doesn't come to that. Okay. It's still... It's still a big eye, but it's smaller than before. I think what I would let it do is just let it dry and then I'll tidy it up on the sides a little bit more. Wherever you are, I hope that you're safe and everything is fine. Hope you're doing well. I know it's a bit of a taxing time, but I hope everyone is doing well. I really do. There we go.
Oh, that's messy. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. That face is driving me nuts. <laughs> I'll get it working. I'll think of a way. <laughs> Thanks, Jeffrey Management. I really appreciate the support. Thank you very much. I'm glad it's looking good because on my paper it looks a little bit messy, but I'm glad it looks good on the camera. <laughs> Just trying to lift some of the color. That I don't need. Okay, <laughs> uh, so my birds just made love, <laughs> literally just now. <laughs> I was wondering why they were being so noisy. That, that sounded like a mating call to me. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I looked behind me and there they were. Yes. So they must be happy because this is the second time today that I've seen. <laughs> there could have been more that I haven't seen. <laughs> oh, so they're very happy, clearly. Um, the re you know, actually, I got them a new cage because um, they were fighting in the old one. Um, she laid four eggs and two of them were bad. And two of them have babies inside. So when we switched over to the new cage, we threw away the eggs that were bad and we kept the good ones. 
And um, they weren't, she kept rejecting him in the old cage. And I was really worried because when she, when she laid the first three eggs, they were like really, they got on really well. They were the best friends. They were always sleeping together, doing everything together, printing each other and all that. But then after the fourth egg, um, I mentioned in one of my previous videos that she got really sick. And that was because she was egg bound uh, for a while. But thankfully she didn't die from that she managed to expel the egg, which I'm very grateful for. And, um, but after that, you know, the two birds started fighting continuously in the cage and I was really worried about them. So I thought I'm, I'm gonna buy a new cage, a bigger cage, cause I don't want them fighting. So that's what I did. And ever since I bought the new cage, which arrived yesterday, they have been really happy. <laughs> so I'm really happy for them because I want my birds to be happy. I'm really glad that the cage helped. Yes, yes, Jeffrey Management. Eek, 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 eek. <laughs> That's the sound they make continuously <laughs> when they're very, very happy. <laughs> oh, this eye is giving me nightmares. This is the importance of having a good drawing to begin with. So you don't have to go and clean up afterwards like this, which takes even more time than the actual drawing itself. So that's a lesson for you guys. Hi, hi, David from David's Art Channel. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Trying to keep an eye on the comments that you guys are leaving me. Oof, making a bit of a mess there. Um, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this. I don't think I have, but I'm actually, there go my birds again. I'm actually ambidextrous. I can use both hands equally well. I can also draw and write with both hands. However, I can't draw as well uh, as with my right hand or write as well with my right hand. But I do believe that I may have been um, born uh, left-handed rather than right-handed because there's a lot of things that I do more naturally with my left hand than with my right hand. And I don't even realize I, I, I'm i doing it until afterwards, just like now I was wiping with my left hand. It just feels more comfortable for me to wipe with my left hand. And then I switched over to my right hand. It's, you know, it's not important. It's just like an interesting tidbit or not. Maybe not an interesting tidbit about me. Because <laughs> um, uh, I think I've read somewhere that a lot of people or some people are born left-handed. But because we're taught to do everything with our right hands, uh, you know, we end up getting more proficient with our, with our right hands. But actually... Uh, we're meant to be left-handed. And they say that's one of the reasons why people develop dyslexia, because they're meant to be left-handed, but they, they are taught to do everything with their right hand. And I have dyslexia, so I don't know if that's connected. Also, I know two languages, and, and I came over to England when I was 11, as I already mentioned. And they say when you, you learn two languages like that, I don't know, at that age, um, it confuses your brain a little bit as well, and you end up getting dyslexia, I don't know. It's just things that I've heard and that I've read. I'm not an expert. <laughs> just trying trying to psychoanalyze myself while I'm trying to fix this eye, which is giving me nightmares. <laughs> At least it's looking better. It's It doesn't look as ridiculous, ridiculously huge as before. So I'm gonna fix that one in a second. Probably gonna have to get another tissue. Look, look at that, look how dirty that is in a second. Oops, dropping tissue bits now. 
Okay. My birds are so happy together. I'm really, I'm nearly finished with this painting. I just have to do a few more shadows to the legs and to the bear and stuff. If it wasn't for the eyes, I may be finished by now, but I am a perfectionist. I don't think I'm going to get it as perfect as I would have wanted it because I have made a mess of it a little bit. But, you know, it is just a sketch in a sketchbook. It's okay to have messy drawings in your sketchbook. Your sketchbook doesn't need to be perfect. And I don't want to waste too much more time on this painting because it was really a review for the Pelican Opaque Watercolors and it is just a sketch and I've already spent like four hours on this. It's, it's like it's just a little sketch. I shouldn't have spent such a long time but I know in my last video I was really really tired and I think I was a little bit slower than usual because I was so tired. No excuse. Just you know if you're tired you're I don't know, your mechanisms <laughs> function slower than usual. <laughs> okay. The thing about black is that black is really potent. So you want to be careful how you use it in, in a picture because if you have too much black, the black will take away from other colors. And the reason for this is because black is the absence of light. In one of my previous videos, I kept saying that black is the absence of color, but actually that's not correct. Black is the absence of light. And so because it's the absence of light, uh, it, it just has this effect that when it's next to other colors, the other colors just kind of like disappear, if you will. They're just like, the, the black will always pop out is what I'm saying. So you want to be careful how much black you use in a painting because of how potent it is. But on this occasion, you know, her eyes were black. So... They're so happy. I'm so happy for my birds. <laughs> okay. Trying to make the eyes a little bit smaller. This is actually really good paper. This is Fabriano. I said this at the beginning of part one. So it, it, even though it's a sketchbook, <laughs> even though it's a sketchbook, it can actually, I hear you. I hear you, Ferdy. I am here, but I'm not talking to you, okay? I'm talking to the nice people on the internet. <laughs> I don't know, maybe he thinks I'm talking to him. He could do, because <laughs> he talks to me a lot. And when I sing to him, he actually sings back, which is really cool, actually. Um, apparently, it's, oh no, I'm smudging. Apparently, you know, depending on the species, like in, in humans, for example, it's the girls that seduce the boys, yeah, with their prettiness and their charm and all the other things. But in birds and many other species, it's it's the boys that seduce the girls. So, for example, the boys are the pretty ones. They're the more colorful ones. They're the ones that sing. Like, she chirps a lot, and she makes a lot of cute little noises, but she doesn't sing like he does. <laughs> See, that's him singing. And that's because uh, the boys are the ones that are supposed to, you know, seduce the girls in, in, in you know, they're zebra finishes, okay? So that's why he's the one that has the pretty sounds and the pretty colors. <laughs> so when you hear zebra finch sing, then you know it's the male because the, the girls don't sing. But also with zebra finches, there's some things to look out for, like the orange cheeks, uh, and, and the pretty uh, red wings with the white dots, though, you know, uh, not all males ever finishes are going to look like that. But um, that's that's the typical males ever finch for you. My female one is just white all over. She's really pretty. She looks like a tiny little dove. She's so cute. I yeah, made such a mess of this face. <laughs> oh, Jesus.
Still, I have to admit that painting Maggie has been quite a lot of fun. I think this is one of the most fun pictures I've done. I really like drawing shapes, and there was a lot of shapes. I mean, everything is shapes anyway, but all art is shapes, really. But um, I'm simplifying. Of course, it's much more than that. But, um, yeah, no, I really, I really enjoyed drawing the teddy bear, and I thought, you know, her hair was a lot of fun. I love how she looks like the sun, like this dramatized version of the sun with like kind of her hair kind of remind me of sun rays if you will and that was really fun to paint and draw these layer quite well i'm actually quite impressed at the way they layer that's really nice Thank you for the likes, by the way. Oh, guys, oh, just put a finger on my own paint. Thank you for the likes, guys. Uh, I've got two likes. Uh, I'm quite happy. I know that's not a lot compared to a lot of other videos or people, but, you know, any likes you guys throw my way, I'm grateful for. So thank you for your support. It really means a lot to me. And I, I genuinely hope you are enjoying the video because I do have fun making these videos, but I want you guys to enjoy them as well. So if there's anything you would want me to paint in the future or draw or, or any challenge you'd like me to pursue, please do let me know and I'll, I'll try and do that for you. The good thing about gouache is that because it's opaque, um, it will you can cover a lot of mistakes with that. It's I mean some people say it's a bit like in an in between between watercolors and acrylic, and I I guess I see what they're saying. I think opaque watercolors is more of an it's a more appropriate term. But I see what they're saying because it's kind of it's opaque like acrylic, except it's more matte. I think. Um, and it allows you, you can layer, layer it really well because of its opacity and you can cover mistakes really easily because of its opacity and you can do that with acrylic too. Uh, but also, you know, like watercolors, you can lift it, uh, um, you can make it translucent if you add enough water. So I, I just think gouache is a really versatile medium personally. I love how matte it is. I think the matte finish is one of the most beautiful things about it. This is not, these are not the prettiest gouache paints I've worked with, but when you work with really professional ones, the quality you get is just amazing. But I really liked, for example, that I was able to draw on top of them once they're dry. I think that's really cool. You can still see on the teddy bear, you can see the pencil marks, I think. Yeah. I'm just gonna let the face dry for a little bit before I try and make it a little bit better. And I'm just gonna try and um, just think there's a bit of a highlight there. I'm gonna try and, and add a highlight to, to that, to the red in the baby rattle. Because it's a new cage, my birds are just like exploring everything. And I've got this calcium bar in the cage. And um, they've been, they don't eat it a lot, to be honest. They eat it occasionally. 
but it's attached like there's this green uh, plastic bit that is holding it onto the cage. And because we changed the position of it in the new cage, she was just like biting into it just to try to find out what it is. I had a bell in the cage once and he bit into it very gently. I say bit into it because I don't know exactly what it is, but they open their beaks and they grab it with their beaks to try and figure out what this thing is. And uh, yeah, they gave up on it <laughs> pretty soon. Uh, yeah, she, she was just like biting to, to it to try and find out what it is, but she gave up on it when she realized it wasn't food and then she gave up. She went back to the calcium bar. I'm gonna add some highlights. Mm, maybe I should leave that to the end. <laughs> I'll leave that to the end. Okay, I'm just going to go get some water, guys. Just please bear with me. Give me one, less than one minute. Okay, I'm back. I'm just going to drink some water. Oh, all right. They do dry quite fast, like acrylic does. I think that's another reason why they say gouache is like a mixture of acrylic and watercolor, because acrylic dries really fast. And these, I mean, gouache in general dries really fast as well. But unlike acrylic, you can lift, uh, lift rather, the color Ooh. after it's dried. Can't do that with acrylic. Just keep that in mind, because when I tried acrylic for the first time, I <laughs> literally went into it completely unprepared. I did not do any research on it. I had no idea what to expect. I thought it was just a paint like all the others. Um, I didn't realize how fast it was going to dry. And so I put a lot of paint on my palette and I put a lot of paint on my paper. And then when I tried lifting it, it wouldn't lift. And I was like, oh, no. And then I thought I'd done something wrong. So I did some research and that's when I found out that acrylic, once it's dry, that, that is it. But the thing is you can layer over it, so that's okay. Yeah. So if you make a mistake, that's okay. You can cover it by going over it. But um, yeah, just be aware. And then of course I lost all that paint I'd mixed in my palette because it dried. And if it dries on the palette, you know, that's it. You, you've lost it. Like you can't, you can't reuse it again. Trust me. <laughs> So you don't want to mix too much. With oil, you can. You can mix quite a lot because um, oil dries really slowly. So you can, you know, you can use it for days afterwards, depending on which brand you use. You want to be careful because you also don't want to leave it too long because once oil dries, you can't use it either. Uh, sometimes, oh, I think there are bits coming up on my brush. Oh, here we go. See, that's how you know it's a cheap brush, even though it's a good brush because the paint, for some reason, is coming off of the paintbrush. The, la the lacquer on the outside, I don't know. See that? Don't know what's happening there. Okay. Okay. All right, let, let me add some shadows to the legs. So the green, okay. So I have this green, this green, and this green. 
I think I'm going to take that one and add the, a little bit of black to it. Maybe, maybe that one actually. I'm going to use a bigger brush to mix the color because it's going to take ages. <laughs> I think that was the mistake I did to begin with. It's always good to try and use one paintbrush for mixing and then a different one to use on the actual painting. Yeah, very noisy today. <laughs> I think it's because they're enjoying their new home. I mean, they're always a little bit noisy, but they're, they're more noisy than usual. My birds. With paint, really, it's all about how it dries. Uh, it doesn't matter what it looks like when it's wet because you want to look out for the finish that you get, for the effect that you get once it dries because these are cheap. Um, they don't dry very saturated, which is a little bit frustrating, to be fair. Um, yeah. I'm trying to learn to control my strokes because I can be quite messy with a paintbrush. So I'm, I'm trying to find it difficult to use paintbrushes, to be fair. I think, like with everything, it's all about practice. It's not magic, it's practice. <laughs>
you also want to be able to control your water because if you have too much water, you might lose control of the painting. And I ended up making a mistake and having to rectify it by, I made this bit of the tentacle too large. And then I had to make this one larger in order to compensate, which I'm not happy about, but it's already done. It could be that the this wash or these wash paints just don't work very well with this paper. That could be why the finish looks a bit dry. It could just be the paper itself. Uh, it doesn't matter how good the paper is. Uh, sometimes certain art supplies just won't work with certain types of paper. It could be because it's you know the art supplies are cheap. Um, but yeah, I mean, I could have tried a different paper and it might have worked. For some reason, bits of the paint on the, the you know, they used to paint the, the, the body of the paintbrush with the wooden bit keeps uh, scaling off, like falling off. I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> Not doing anything major to the paintbrush. As you can see, all I'm doing is holding it. So I don't understand why the paint is peeling you off. What's happening? I don't know.
can smell food. I think one of my roommates is cooking downstairs. But I have to let that dry. Okay. I think they're just too chalky. And that's why you get a bit of this dry finish. Because this is good paper. This is Fabriano, so... But yeah. Okay, I'm going to try and make some more of that pink on the bear. Actually, I'm going to try and do that pink and that one first. Yes, I can hear you. Just gonna do one thing really quickly. Yeah, as I was saying, I, I really enjoyed doing this painting. I really enjoyed drawing Maggie as an alien. I enjoyed drawing the teddy bear, the baby rattle, the baby bottle and the cube. I like shapes, so that was a lot of fun. I thought the dummy was really cute and her big eyes. It's just, I drew her eyes just a tiny bit too big. They do layer super well though. I do like that about these paints and they do mix really well. Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh my god, <laughs> I'm just making the dummy bigger and bigger. I need to stop before it takes over the face. That would be that would be a great movie actually. Attack of the dummies, these demonic dummies that you give to babies, you don't know they're demonic, and then they start attacking their faces. I don't know how I come up with these ideas. <laughs> <laughs> but wouldn't that be fun I think that would be fun I think somebody should have this movie made Attack of the Living Dummies Yes, yes, but they're baby dummies Instead of puppets I think that's great I think that's a great idea <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's what happens when You have nothing bad to do with your life <laughs> It's just a piece of paper that I used to get rid of my extra paint. Mm. Okay, so let me try and do that pink now. Just gonna take a, a sip of water. Gonna take this magenta and just mix it a little bit with white. I think that's how I did it last time. So much for not wanting to get the paints um, dirty. <laughs> Let me see. Oh uh, yeah, okay. That looks like maybe the Also, I believe the thing about gouache is that it also dries lighter than when it first go on the paper. It either goes brighter, what am I saying? <laughs> Does like stay in it. It either dries uh, lighter or darker, I can't remember now, but I think it dries lighter. That's what happens when you have dyslexia. You say weird words that don't exist, that don't make any sense. Then afterwards, people mock you and they're like, what are you saying? <laughs> and you're like, I have no idea. I don't know where that's come from. Because <laughs> you really don't. <laughs> okay. 
Let me add a little bit of black to the corner there. If you can hear someone talking in the background, that's my roommate. He's in the next room. I believe he's talking on the phone with someone. So hopefully you can't hear him. I can hear him. So I don't know if you can hear him on the camera or on the video, but just ignore it. It's just my roommate. I have some shadows here. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of white to that dark pink that I use for the shadows, just for the teddy bear's belly. I know some people paint faster than me. I do apologize. I'm just a very slow uh, painter on a very slow drawer. <laughs> drawer. I'm not a drawer. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Very slow at drawing, I guess. Gonna let that dry and I'm gonna mix some more of that brown. Then I'm gonna try to fix that eye <laughs> and finish the face and we're done. Thank you so much for all of you who are still watching. I really appreciate your support once again. Thank you guys. Um I hope you enjoyed this series so far. I know it's been um, a long time, a lot of hours on this little drawing. Something stuck. 
Okay. <laughs> Let's get rid of it in the end. Okay, let's see if I can make that brown. I remember last time I mixed all the primary colors together. Actually, I think that's right now. I'm going to try and add. Oh, that was too much black. It's too much black. But it might work. Gonna try and mix that that brown now. Okay, and I'm going to use the Carmine Red. Which creates this beautiful purple. And then I'm going to try and use the um, yellow. I'm going to add a bit more blue to it. Maybe a bit more red. Oh, I think I added too much red. Maybe doing this wrong. <laughs> Okay, I got a brown. Oh, good. It looks very purplish here, but it is brown. Oh, I always ruin the eyes. Hmm. 
No, the ears. It's okay, it's not so bad. Yeah, I should have left the highlights. I wasn't thinking. <laughs> I'm getting a bit tired now. Mm.
Hmm. Okay, I'm going to try and fix the other eye. I got some on my finger. Okay, let me lift the book just to see what it looks like. Yeah, okay. I don't think I can lift it, any more paint off of this one. I'm trying.
Okay. Okay, my birds are chirping again. They want to be quiet and now they're chirping again. The eyes are still a little bit uneven. I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> I had it too much black again. Oh, pain of my life. Okay, once the eye is dried, I will paint around the face again and then do the eyelashes. Okay, I think they're closer to one another than they were before. I think one is still a little bit long underneath, but... I'll, uh, I'll go over it with yellow paint.
I'm nearly done. Just a few more touches. Okay. Oh, did not mean to do that. I'm going to have to wait for that to dry. I feel like I'm making this study bear look like a raccoon. <laughs>
Ich, okay. <lacht> After a while, if you mix the paints enough times, they become a little bit streaky, which is not very nice, unfortunately.
Uish. Nearly <laughs> I just messed up the, the bear's face a little bit there. But hopefully I'm nearly finished. <laughs> it's really thick paint. Just gonna leave it to dry. I'm going to add a bit more black. Okay. I apologize. Usually I'm more talkative than this, but I don't know what's wrong today. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm going to let this dry and then do the rest of the details. I'm going to add some highlights in white and then do the rest of the details in pencil. And also add the eyelashes once it's dried.
Okay. <laughs> I think I'm going to leave it there. I've had some eyelashes. I know the eyes are not quite the same, but never mind. I'll do better next time. <laughs> This paint is so messy. <laughs> <laughs> My birds are so funny. I know they're getting up to something because they're cooing at each other. But the moment they think I'm looking, it's so funny. They literally separate as if to say, no, nope, nothing's happening here. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> They're very private. They don't like me watching what they do. It's so cute. But uh, they're cooing. I know what that means. They're cooing at each other. <laughs> when they think I'm looking, they immediately separate, like straight away, like genuinely as if say, no, nope, you're wrong. There's nothing happening here. Never mind. <laughs> and then they wait for me to have my back turned again or for me to leave the room. <laughs> and then they go back to doing what they were doing before. <laughs> they are so clever. Um, okay. See, did you hear them cooing? It's because they're doing romantic things. That's right. <laughs> so cute. They're just very, very happy. And I'm very happy for them because I want them to be happy. I don't want them to be fighting. And they started fighting in, in their previous cage. Like they would go to the food pot and then they would start pecking at each other's heads. I wasn't happy. I was very upset because up until that point, they'd been so close. So I'm glad that that has been reinstated and they're close again. Oh, she's cooing. She's so cute. And he's singing. They like each other very much. I'm so happy with my little birdies. I know I, I sound so cheesy. Sound like such a mom. <laughs> you know, the kind of mom that always talks about her children. That's obviously the kind of mom I'm going to be, you know. Then everyone is going to be like, oh, all she talks about is her kids. Jesus, doesn't she have anything else to talk about? 
how annoying. They're like those people who have dogs and they want to tell everyone about their dogs. And then they take pictures of their dogs and they want everyone to see the pictures of their dogs. I'm becoming one of those people. <laughs> but with my birds. I used to have a dog when I was a kid. Uh, she was called Lassie. She was the same breed uh, as the Lassie dog from the famous show. That's why she was called Lassie. Um, she used to be my auntie's, but then when my auntie moved to England before we did, they gave the dog to us. And of course she kept her name and my cousin who I grew up with and used to be like a brother to me, you know, we loved that dog so much. <laughs> but now, yeah, she's, she's gone. Okay, I'm going to add some highlights, and then I'm going to let this dry, and I'm going to go over it with a little bit of pencil. It's not perfect. It's not, it's not a realistic depiction of what I was trying to draw, but it's a cute little interpretation, I guess. That's too much. And there's like one here. Oop. There's a little bit here. And then there's a line here. And then there's a little line here. <laughs> I don't know if that's working. Then there's a little highlight there. Gonna try and fix that nose, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna be capable. Then there was, yep, yeah, there's a one here. There's a highlight there. Then there's one that goes like this. They're very quiet. Oh, they're next to each other. See, they waited for me to be distracted. And then they slowly approached each other and they start preening each other, which is this romantic thing they do when they're, you know, in the mood which is interesting because they've already been in the mood twice if you get by drift. So <laughs> they've been, uh, obviously this cage has really made a difference. <laughs> but I'm happy because I'd rather them be romantic with each other than fighting. You don't want your birds to fight. That's not, that's not a good sign. See, when they're this quiet, because they're up to something. I know them now. Ooh, no. No, <laughs> I messed up that highlight. Gouache is great for highlights. It really is. Maybe I can Oh, okay, so Jeffrey Management says, Lassie is a rough collie dog. Thank you for looking that up for me. Yeah, that, that was the dog we had. And because the dog we had was exactly the same as the one in the TV show, my auntie called her, you know, called her Lassie, like the dog in the TV show. But when my aunt moved to England, the dog was left with us and my dad uh, couldn't take care of her. So eventually she was given away. So we, yeah, my cousin and I, we were devastated. <laughs> but I think my dad, you know, 
He wasn't trying to be cruel or anything. He just couldn't take care of the dog, so he had to give her away. But it's not the sort of thing you forget, even though it happened to me when I was a child. I've never forgotten it. It stays with you because when you're a kid, you know, you, you bond with animals, even as an adult. I mean, I'm very close to my birds, but I think uh, it's when you're a kid, it's, it's very traumatizing when you lose a pet. Thank you for the four of you who have stuck with me. I mean, I don't know, some, some of you may have come and gone, but uh, thank you for watching this until the end. I really appreciate the support. I really hope you're enjoying the video. As I've said, if you like it, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Do leave a like, that would be really great. And um, leave a comment, but also, as I said, if you want, if you have anything in mind, you want me to paint anything or draw something, or you want me to review a particular brand, please do let me know. Okay, my boy, Zebra Finch, is now eating the, the millets. Is it millets? Is that what they're called? That I put inside the cage. They love those things. <laughs> it's like a treat for them. I heard him munching, so I looked back to see what was happening. Obviously taking a break from all the wooing and the cooing and all that. <laughs> I can't, you know what? I can't salvage that teddy bear. I just... I'm not even going to bother anymore. <laughs> I'm just going to write off the teddy bear as a failure. I tried. I couldn't salvage it and and just leave it. Ooh, just leave it at that. Ah, oh, what am I doing? Just ruining the eyes. Ruining the eyes. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry and then just put a highlight there. I think this is the longest video so far. Once again, thank you so much for all those of you who have stuck with me. Really appreciate your support. It means a lot to me that you're watching my videos, it really does. Like the highlights are so potent. <laughs> oh yeah, I put some highlights on the eyes. I think these highlights are too harsh. They're much softer in the actual picture. Kind of goes around like this.
Okay, I'm just going to let this dry. <laughs> Um, and then go over it with pencil for the final details. Um, I'm just going to leave it as it is. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, I suppose I should give you some final thoughts on these paints because it is a review. So as already stated, I think these lean more towards the gouache side of things than uh, watercolor. I don't think, as I've already said before, that they are proper gouache. I think it's more um, that they have a lot of chalk in them. And so because of this, um, they operate more like gouache than watercolor. Uh, but regardless, the, the you know, the box is right. They are opaque paints. Um, I think that uh, they mix quite well. Um, oh, getting paint on my hand, and they layer quite well. But they, the, the finish, they dry a little bit chalky. And it just doesn't look great. Um, I would say they're good for students or children, but I wouldn't recommend them to professionals because of the way that they dry. I think they can be good if you're still learning or if you're, if you're a professional. But um, you've never tried gouache and you want to try gouache to see what it's like, but you don't want to spend a lot of money, then, you know, this may be a good first set for you to try. You know. I would say. They did again, they mix well, they layer well, the colors are quite vibrant and pretty. But if you, um, but they are quite chalky, that's the only thing. Um, they have a substantial amount of chalk in them. I wasn't really happy, I, I felt like you have to add a lot of water, um, in order to lift them off the cake. Uh, you know, these little cakey pens, um, and they do dry chalky on the paper. So that's a massive, uh, you know, no, no, because the important thing is how the paint's dried. You want them to look good after they're dried. And, I mean, they look okay. Uh, you know, it's okay. It looks good. I like the final painting. But I did, found it, I did find it hard. I mean, I say they mix well, as in they blend well. But actually, um, it really depends how much color you're using. If it's uh, diluted with water, they tend to mix okay. But if you use a lot like I did here, it, I did struggle to blend them a little bit. Um, because they lift really easily. And I think they just lift a little too easily. Because what happens is you end up trying to blend them. But because they lift too well, you end up getting this uh, spots where there's paint missing, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. So overall, I mean, I personally don't think I'm going to use them again. Um, I did, I do, I did enjoy the painting this. Uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, I wasn't crazy about how the paints felt on the paper and i have so many brands that this is definitely not one of my favorites um again i'm not saying they're bad because they're not i've i've uh, tried all sorts of cheap art supplies and some cheap art supplies are really truly terrible um you can't use them at all they're so bad sometimes they don't have enough pigment or um 
they uh, they don't blend well or they don't mix well, I wouldn't recommend them at all. With the with these ones, I do recommend them if you're a beginner uh, or if you're you know a child or if you're a student or if you're new to gouache. I think these are good enough. Uh, for you know, experimenting or starting with you know a first set, they're fine. Um, but yeah, I, I don't like the chalk finish, um, so I, I couldn't recommend them to professionals. You want your um, your dried painting to look good, and it's not that it doesn't look good; it looks okay, but it just doesn't look professional enough, in my opinion. I mean, obviously. You know, I'm sure that better there are better artists out there than me who, you know, might take this paint uh, and just make something wonderful with it, and and might not even look chalky at the end of it. But the, the you know the whole point of having a tool is to make your job easier, and if the tool is going to get in the way of that, um, I also think like the paint looks a little bit streaky when I tried layering the different greens and stuff. It did look streaky. And I also don't like, as I said at the beginning of the video, that in some places the particles separated from the water. So, it's, yeah, in some places the color looks a little bit more subdued and I had that extra layers. With really good art supplies, like really expensive art supplies, you don't need to use a lot. Even if you have a really small bottle, a little goes a long way because it's so saturated and so pigmented and, and it's just so wonderful. So you might be paying a lot for a little thing, but you'd be surprised at how long it lasts you. Whereas with this one, it's cheap but because you're going to have to use a lot of uh, pigment to compensate. It might not last you as long. Oh, that was still what I didn't realize. <laughs> so, um, yeah. My, my final ver verdict would be like use it if you're, as I said, if you're new to the to gouache um, or you're a beginner or, or you're a child, I think this is a, a good enough set. But um, I wouldn't recommend it to professionals, and I don't think uh, I'm going to use them ever again. Or maybe, like, if it's a quick sketch in my sketchbook, maybe. Um, but um, I wouldn't use it for a big piece um, because um, even though this was a small piece, it took me quite a while. And, um, yeah, I wouldn't use it for a piece like this again. Maybe, like... A little quick sketch maybe but I've got so many art supplies anyway that I don't I don't even think I would bother to be honest so what, what's the final verdict um I would say if I was giving it a rating I would say six out of ten good if you're starting out um, it's vibrant enough the colors are pretty uh, but it's just too chalky, um, and there are better, there are better art supplies out there. The cheaper gouache may not be as cheap as this one, or it may be um, out there that you know does the job. Um, it's it's better, and it's the same price. So But they're not terrible. They are not terrible. They're just very, very chalky. So, yeah, six out of ten. If you want a cheap uh, palette, a cheap wash palette to begin with, you can't really go wrong with this one. It will get the job done. It's a little bit, <laughs> my birds, it's a little bit hard to paint with.
Okay, so my birds have just made love again. I knew they were going to do it because I recognized the sounds. That's the third time today that I've known, that I've seen, okay? They may have done it <laughs> other times uh, and me not, you know, I, I may not have noticed. I have never seen them make love this many times. <laughs> they're obviously very <laughs> happy or they're trying to get pregnant because they only do have two eggs left. Um, I think I mentioned that they, that they did have four to begin with, but two of them were bad. So maybe they're just trying to get pregnant again. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a lot. <laughs> I'm happy for them. I'm really happy for them. <laughs> I recognize the sound now <laughs> of, when it's, of when it's about to happen. Yeah, so yeah, uh, you know, I can't, there's no point in me repeating myself. Uh, I think, as I said, um, I wouldn't use it again. It's, a, it's much too chalky for me, but they're not, it's not a bad set of gouache. It does get the job done. And again, I'm sure a better artist than me would probably have done a better job and probably would have found a way around it. But um, uh, yeah, I think if you're a beginner or you're new to gouache or you're a child, this set is, is a good set. But if you're a professional, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think one of the things that I failed to mention when I first reviewed it uh, on the first part, uh, the first video, is that uh, it's got this mixing palette. So that's really nice um, that it comes with a mixing palette. I haven't had to use a separate palette. I've been using this one, and it's nice that the areas are quite big because you can... Uh, the first time I started mixing my colors, I was actually using two colors per area because it's so big, but on this occasion, I just used one per square. Um, but you can use it however you want. Uh, it's a bit big, so I wouldn't, I mean, you can take it, it's small enough that it would fit in your bag, I guess. So you can use it for traveling if you wanted, but it is quite a big palette. As you can see, this is my sketchbook and this is how big the palette is in comparison. So it may not be the best one for traveling. But I think it's really pretty. I do like the way the colors look in the palette. And, and you know, um, it's got this little bit of cardboard. cardboard. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Which you'll probably throw away. The brush is okay. I wasn't crazy about it. It's soft. Um, so it's not hard. That's good. It's better to be soft than hard, I think. Um, but... It's not the best brush in the world, but it's not the worst brush in the world. It's okay. I I prefer the brushes that I've used. I found that I had more control with them than with this little one. Um, right. So now I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to add some hi highlights later. I'll go over it with pencil. Um, I, I like the way it's turned out. It's not perfect, to be fair. <laughs> It's not perfect. It's not exactly like the picture, but I still like it. I think it's turned out really cute and adorable. And I had, I did have fun painting it. <sighs> I think I'm going to use different pencils though. Um, let me just see what else I have. Because these ones were a bit slight, like they were a bit subdued in color. Oh, bear with me, guys. I'm just trying to take my pencils. <laughs> I mean, uh, I suppose I could use this Prismacolor light fast ones. Uh, Prismacolor are quite waxy. So I don't know how they're going to fare on top of this picture. Oh, there's one. Oh, the white is missing. Okay, that's fine. Uh, but I can try. I may need a sharpener. Do we have, oh, look, this blue one has been used quite a lot. Um, okay. going to try this yellow. Is it dried? Still quite wet. Prismacolor are... Possibly 
my favorite pencils alongside Caran Dash Luminous. Uh, though I have recently bought the Derwent Light Fast. And they were very, very nice. But I'm yet to use them properly. I did a color chart with them. They felt really great. But I haven't used them in a, in a painting yet. Whereas I have used Caran d'Ache Luminance and Prismacolor. Okay, the, the Prismacolors go well on top of... I know I shouldn't be using light fast pencils on top of a paint, which is not light fast. <laughs> it's just a waste, but I tried to take my W. Smith pencils out of the uh, the cupboard, whatever it is, where I store my pencils, and they just wouldn't come out. And I just wanted to get on with the video. The thing about the Prismacolor pencils is that they they have good coverage. They're quite opaque. I really like them. I think they're cooing at each other again. Wow. My birds, like, I don't know. It's the time of the season. <laughs> really, yeah. Also, the thing about, I feel like this has turned into a review of Prismacolor pencils, but the thing about Prismacolor pencils is that they blend really beautifully. The, um, this is a good thing about these water-based um, paints is you can go over it with pencil quite easily. Can't believe this video is three hours. Three hours. Gonna use a white, not necessarily a Prismacolor white. I've got some whites here. Should I use the Caran Dash Luminance one? I'll use the Caran Dash Luminance one. I'll, oh no, I found a Prismacolor one. There we go. And it's the light fast one. It's a, it's it is part of this set. It's a light fast. So Actually, I do have blenders. I don't need to use the white. Um, I've got them right here. I don't know what I'm thinking. So I've got this Prismacolor blender, the light fast one. But all blenders are light fast, I think. There we go. So I don't need to use the white because um, you don't want to use the white for everything. I, I think I said in, in one of my previous videos, I keep saying that, but it's true, that sometimes it's better to use a yellow to... Um, lighten the colors rather than white because whites uh, tend to turn the colors more into like a pastel version of the color whereas the yellow will lighten it up but it depends on what you're trying to achieve what you're trying to do so just be aware of that
Mm, okay, I'll try with the blender. The white is also quite powerful, the Prismacolor and the Karen Dash Luminance White, so you don't want to overpower the colors with white. Okay, let's see. Um, I'll use this red for the dummy. I can see the wax shining <laughs> from this angle. Gonna use a bit of black. Where's black? Here we go. This is why I prefer to film these videos in daylight because I don't have a light shining down on my piece of paper, so it's easier for me to see what I'm doing. But unfortunately, that's not always possible. So. The birds are just sitting next to each other. Oh my god, it's already 8.22, guys. <laughs> I've been here five hours. <laughs> okay. So I've reviewed the um, the paints. I give it a six out of ten. So the reasons already explained. I don't want to repeat myself. So I'm just going to finish this picture, and uh, hopefully you guys will like it. Look how beautiful <laughs> the Prisma Color White is. Trying to soften that highlight.
the set of 24, I wish there was a more oranges or like a yellow orange in this one, but there isn't. Okay, I'm going to add some, some lines to the bow. Okay. These are such good pencils. They are so opaque and saturated. So easy to use, they're just wonderful.
<laughs> it's one of the problems with Prismacolor pencils, they break sometimes. It's a bit frustrating. That's really the only problem with these pencils. Otherwise, that'd be absolutely perfect. This is a carmine, carmine red. Um, no, I'll use. I think I'll use. I'll use this one, actually. And I'm gonna gonna do the green. Only because I think the chalk of the paint um, has made it look a little bit pastel. Maybe because I mixed them too much. That it that was one of the problems with these paints that uh, after a while the colors become a little bit muddy. If you mix them too much, but also quite chalky, and you can see the chalk. This is why I cannot recommend these to professionals because they're just too chalky, doesn't look good, and the chalk over overpowers the color. So that's not a good thing. Having to go over with the pencils to kind of bring some of that color back because the chalk has overpowered it so much. Thank <laughs> you. 
I've messed up the highlights on the tentacles, but never mind. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, okay, I'm just going to finish the baby bottle and the bear. <laughs> and then I'll be finished. Okay. I'm going to... Maybe this one. Maybe the purple one. So, kind of... Okay, and now the bear. I'm gonna go over it with this purple. This is a very purplish brown, I thought. I'll go over it a little bit with this brown. these with the carmine is the only pink I have. I may have to add some white to it. Okay, and, and that's it. That's, that's my picture. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed my review and the final painting. Please let me know in the comments what you think. Oh, sorry about the shakiness. This is what... Oh, hold on. Let me just... Because you can't quite see the baby bottle. I'm done, let me just
So this is what the picture looks like. I'm going to bring it up. Oh, it's got things falling out to the camera. Okay, I hope you guys like it. I did have fun painting it. Uh, I do like the final result, even if it doesn't look exactly like um, the original one. Okay, let me know what you think in the comments. And if you like my artwork, please do subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Once again, I appreciate all the support you guys have given me. And let me know if you have anything in mind, like a brand you want me to review or a painting you want me, you know, a picture you want me to create, anything, let me know. And once again, thank you so much, guys. I hope you like the final product. And thank you for sticking with me, supporting me, and watching my videos. You guys are the best. Love you. Thank you. And have a lovely evening or day wherever you are on the planet. Thank you. Bye. Hehehe. <laughs>